Good afternoon and welcome to the floor of the American Dental Association meeting in San Francisco, September 2019. Actually, this is a joint meeting between the American Dental Association membership and the FDI, the International Dental Association, based in Geneva, representing dental associations from around the world. We are this afternoon with Dr. Ger Gerard Seeberger, the president of the newly installed president of the FDI. Gerard, good to be with you. Thank you for doing this uh, live shine chat. And we're very, very excited to hear about your vision of oral care and of the FDI. And firstly, let me thank you for what you have done for dentistry for the past few decades. You have advanced dentistry around the world, gotten dentistry in a higher profile in many parts of the world. Thank you, thank you for what you've done. So, a little bit of your vision for where the FDI could be going. Thank you, Stan, for the opportunity. It's really great to be with Henry Schein, one of our major partners of FDI, supporting us. And just to mention it immediately, the World Oral Health Day has become an event which is seen now by two billion people all wow. around the world. Wow. 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 So thank you for supporting that. And of course, we are counting on your continued support. And what about the vision? Well, I think I would stick to what the FDI's vision is, which means bringing optimal oral health all over the world, nobody left behind. How we can do that better? Well, this should make part of a we concept. We cannot do that alone. And our stakeholders from industry and trade are, of course, welcome in order to support our projects. They have greatly worked with us. And if you would have seen what is on the ways five years ago, and just have had the opportunity to look what is, uh, what is underway is now, two days ago, you would be all amazed. And we are amazed, it's because it's reality. We're working on future projects, projects which is mainly looking at involving more and more people into oral health. And I personally see a huge opportunity, as I have noticed, that the companies are also more and more aiming on the prevention part yes. and engage in that more and more. It's not that it should be only an opportunity for a growing market. I myself am looking majorly at Africa and if we would like, and I have the honor to speak with somebody who shows up regularly at the World Economic Forum. So I'm speaking to a highly respected expert and he knows probably much more, so you stand know probably much more about the development of, mar development of markets all over the world. However, my personal favorite is Africa. Probably it will not happen during my mandate, but we can set already, let's say, the landmarks where we could right. be majorly active and do that together. As a matter of fact, my predecessor, that was before Cathy Cal, Patrick yes. Casco was very active very also so. to work into, the, right. di into that direction. And I personally would like to freshen that up again a little bit and of course having you also involved. If I'm speaking about the plus value of prevention, then it's not only about oral health, but yes. with oral health, we can reach out and really work effectively on lowering the burden of non-communicable diseases yes. and I see the dental profession there uh, in a sentinel function which it has always had probably we were forgetting a little bit about in the last years but also freshening that up would of course bring a new wind in also into our advocacy strategies and actions that we are fostering right. in all the national dental associations and get the decision makers more involved. I think uh, your notion of advancing the visibility of oral care as it relates to the non-communicable diseases is critical. In the United States, and the numbers are similar throughout the world, well over half of healthcare costs are incurred as a result of non-communicable diseases. At the same time, we know that there's a direct correlation between good oral care and good health care. If we could figure out 
how to get those that are responsible for expenditure on health care in general to understand that if we can have more wellness, more prevention, and that NCDs include oral care, I think we would be making huge progress in wellness of the population around the world and at the same time ensuring that more people go to see the dentist and live a healthier and longer life. Can the FDI help us get the visibility of the importance of oral care in the continuum of healthcare and as it relates to wellness and prevention in general on the world map? We have a huge opportunity just uh, in a little bit more than three weeks time when we will show up at the United Nations at the high level meeting discussing universal health coverage, yes. which does not mean that everybody gets health for free. But it means also, first of all, uh, responsibilize the populations all over the world, no matter what the income index is in that country or for that country. Uh, we definitely have to make understand that the governments have to buy into that concept in yes. order to not weigh more than 10% of a family household in order to maintain health or health included. And exactly what you have said before, once we have the possibility to recognize oral health in the conglomerate or oral disease in the conglomerate of non-communicable diseases, then probably we have pushed open the door to right. real solutions. As a matter of fact, it's always coming down, how do we finance that? And I can tell you, Stan, I have a concept in my mind that I have discussed with the director of, of the Center of Disease Control in Georgia, and he was amazed. It's not only that I'm pushing, let's say, one industry that should definitely come into a concept, not of entropy, and going to a lower level of, of energy, but into a concept of syntropy in order to organize through healthier populations. Also, a good substrate for growing business and for growing well-being. I mean, we have a mandate that we look after health and well-being of our societies. Right. And you, from your part, have right. also your social role in order to guarantee that. So we are in the same boat. And I can say, and I should say, that we greatly work together with our dental industries. Well, the whole idea, as Benjamin Franklin referred to, the concept of enlightened self-interest, the alignment of business with society, of course, is a winning concept. Yes. We want to work with you in any way we can to ensure that those that are responsible for healthcare expenditure understand that expenses can go down and the quality of life can go up by, bring, by focusing more on non-communicable diseases, which of course include cardiac and cancer and pulmonary and diabetes. But there are two areas that I think are really under, misunderstood and that is mental health and oral care. And through advancing oral care as a way to fight non-communicable diseases, as a way to have healthier people, we will end up with a much better world. We just need to get oral care on that agenda. And it sounds like this is something that you're gonna be campaigning strongly for on behalf of the FDI, and we in industry wanna be there with you. Stan, you're getting it. And what about if I offer you a bridge between the one and the other? So just listen. Uh, of course, I'm a little bit closer to that research focus that we have in Italy and also the spot which is Siena University in Italy. Yes. And there are neurophysiologists that are eagerly working on the correlation between function, a functioning mouth, mainly chewing function, and mental health. And what would you say if you would read a research paper where you can stop a brain aneurysm yes. with chewing function so far in rats. I this is not cherry picking of oh, the Oh, I think that's science. exciting. Yeah. We already know about three months ago, I think there was a study released showing the correlation between good oral care and prevention of Alzheimer's. If we can connect the brain to the mouth, to the body, 
we will in fact be doing a great service for society. And what we also know is that the biggest healthcare challenge in the world relates to the fact that over three, uh, three billion people have carried, carries. No one knows about it. And if we could stop that, we would have three billion people more healthy. How do we do that? And that's the challenge. And we are ready to work with the FDI to mobilize industry and are so pleased that you've taken the helm because we know you'll do something about it. So we want to do whatever we can to advance the knowledge of those that are responsible for healthcare funding. We want those people to understand the importance of the direct correlation between good oral care, good health care, and at the same time we would like to see dentists working closer with physicians. That's something that you're touching, let's say, my start in medicine. And uh, I don't have any problem to say that I started my career in medicine being a male nurse and then becoming a medical student and a dental student. Wow, wow, wow. And I was trained actually at Würzburg University in Germany where a dentist had to know everything about the medical field. So we were drilled and I'm very grateful for that because I have never lost that connection. Right. And uh, it, it is mandatory that we have to work with other specialists tackling the same question of NCDs because otherwise nor the one nor the other will be successful. Right. So encouraging bringing together dentists and physicians to tackle the NCD issues together is something that is also within your line of sight. Definitely yes. Right. Excellent. And the other area that may be of interest for all of us is how we can bring technology into the equation to advance wellness, maybe to figure out how the dental dollar could be expanded so that more value is created for the time spent on oral care. How do we bring in digital technology? I'm sure, Stan, you can read my mind. <laughs> and knowing that my right hand, so my wife is an expert in finance and economics, we oftentimes do not talk only about dentistry when I'm coming home from work, but we talk about financial and economic issues. And just this morning, I was over about an article that was talking about the growing influence of digital, not only in oral health care and oral right. health prevention, but right. also in the entire health arena. Right, right, right. And this is, I just got the numbers this morning from Germany, and it was figured with 15.7% uh, of the entire health market that was only related to digital. Right. And it has a huge increase, has had a huge increase right. over the last two years. And this trend will continue. We shall definitely take into Good. consideration, into strong consideration, new technologies, digital technologies, artificial intelligence, without losing, of course, the medical act. Yes. <laughs> because right. the, the human as long element. as we... Exactly. Right. Exactly. And you, you know, you do have Henry Schein's support and the industry support and the work you want to do in the developing world. Uh, there are billions of people that, whose life we can improve in a significant way by a little bit of dental exposure, a little bit of dental oral care support and we can turn around their lives in a significant way. I know that this is something important to you, to the FDI, and bringing together those oral care associations from around Africa, around the table, under the auspices of the FDI, is something that's commendable and we'd like to support you. Thank you very much, Stan. Thank you. Looking forward to that. Thank you. And so, to a great collaboration as always. Thank you very much. So, Dr. Gerhard Sieberger, Pre newly installed president of the FDI, chatting with uh, us here at the San Francisco Moscone Center where the American Dental Association's 2019 meeting is taking place in conjunction with the FDI annual meeting. Thank you for listening. Look forward to seeing everybody at the ADA meeting next year and at the FDI meeting next year, all with the goal of providing greater visibility to the importance of oral care in the continuum of healthcare and the importance of oral care as a non-communicable disease that can reduce the cost of healthcare while increasing the quality of life.
Thank you, Dr. Seberger. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.